Well, greeting once again, guys, and welcome back to the Base Blaster Audio Tech YouTube channel. And in this video, I have another about two month overdue IC station video. I just had a bunch of other projects I wanted to get done, got them done, and now I'm down to this. <laughs> this video will probably be pretty short because it's fairly basic. This is it here. This is a dual um, NE5532 preamp board. That's all it is. Of course, I have it running into the good old uh, 3116D2 board, which I still abuse. A power transformer that I had to buy because I have nothing that can give it a split voltage. And my good old box, which has a plug on the end, and a set of terminals on the inside. And that's it. So I made this because I'm always playing with things I need a power cord. And I figured doing this would be a lot safer than just clipping alligator clips to exposed mains voltage. Now this was sent to me by IC Station about two months ago with the, uh, the bunch of other goodies I've made videos on. And this would be cool because I actually have a use for this. I have a, a plan for it to go into. I just got to get a project box for it. But it, it it's fairly simple. There ain't really much to say about it. So I guess let's just take a closer look at the actual board itself. Well, I guess we'll just go handheld. So power supplies, like most op amps, you need a split AC transformer. And of course it's rectified into positive negative, but there's a little trick. If you already have a power supply, which has your positive and negative, you can actually just run your positive negative ground and you can remove your regulators and just short the input output pins. For positive regulators, it's gonna be pin one and three. This is your input, output, center your ground. Negative regulators, it's been a while with I linear regulators. I think their pinout is different. I think it's like in out ground, but I'm not sure. Now on this board, you can't see it and neither can I. Okay, after I looked it up, there are their 12 volt regulators, positive and negative 12, filtering some decoupling, and then it goes straight into our dual op amps. Now, I'm not utilizing this board to its full potential because this transformer is a 12.6 12 volt center tap, which means on the AC I have 6.3, center tap 6.3. That means I'm only running on like positive and negative like 9 or 10 volts. So I'm not even at the 12 volts of the regulator, it's just flowing right through it. But of course, if you're familiar with how op amps work, they'll work fine at that voltage. All that means is you can't get as high as a swing on the output. But the gain for the volume on this isn't that high anyway, so you're not gonna get a positive and negative nine volt swing on the output. Input is just normal RCAs. And the output is one of these three pin connectors and it comes with the cable. And to connect it to my amplifier board, I just got some of those breadboard cables and I just shoved it in the end, screwed them down, and it works great. Now it's a three band. Uh, I believe this is our volume, and I think this is our treble mid-range bass. They're backwards, and that drives me nuts. I'm thinking about if I ever install this in a build, I'll just flip the whole thing upside down, because everything I own is bass mid-treble, and this is backwards. Now we're going to go ahead and plug this in now, and I can do so without being so shaky, because that just makes it so much easier. Uh, there's no kind of power switch. we got a little red LED, mm, whatever. You could remove it if you want. So, um, I think now we're going to dig out an RCA. I'm going to pull out the YouTube safe music. It will just play with it a little bit. Now, I haven't looked at the page in a while. So, I don't... Actually, I may as well just pull it up. I got my computer right over here. Right, so I'm looking at the web page, and it does not state what the three frequencies are and how much they're sloping. I guess we could maybe hook the scope to it. Because I'm, now this is just a guess, I'm going to assume it's, it's back, backwards, it's 100 hertz, this is probably like 1k, and this sounds to be around about 10, but it's been a while since I have used this. Where did my phone go? Here it is. Plug it into the, the YouTube safe music, right? The greatest lock screen. <laughs> I think uh, we'll do that. I haven't pulled the scope out in a video in months. I haven't even used it in months. It's just sitting on the edge of my bench cover. See, I think we'll pull the scope out. I need to find more YouTube safe music because I'm getting tired of playing the same songs. Now, this board has gain. It has quite a lot of gain. So, my TPA board, I'm going to turn it halfway. 
I can turn the main. I don't like this song. Anyway, I can turn this volume knob about halfway with the TPA halfway, and at 4 ohms, 21 volts, it will be clipping. Now I've turned the TPA board down and I turn this up more, this itself will begin to clip. But I think that's because uh, I'm running it on just too low of a voltage. So let's try to set our knobs flat here. So the one to the right, of course, which is backwards and it bugs me, is our bass control. That might be closer to like 80 hertz because it doesn't sound much like 100. And then we have our mid-range. I think it's a little lower than 1K, probably about 850. In our treble. Ooh, yeah, that's like 10 or 12k. That's pretty up there. Now, the treble in mid range doesn't cut enough to where if you turn them all the way down and turn your bass all the way up, you pretty much have a subwoofer low pass. I tried doing that with this, and uh, the mids and highs just doesn't cut enough. So, you'd want a dedicated low pass for that. What supply voltage are we running this thing at? So we have 8.6 and negative 9.5? Huh? That ain't fucking right. So there's our 8.6 and negative 9.5. And huh? What's my AC coming in? Measure from the center tap. You got 7.2, 7.4. Is my transformer off? Not nope, both 7.4. I didn't let it stabilize. And if we measure across, then we have 15.2. But this transformer, I think, is uh, two and a half amps, so it would be a uh, 12.6 volts center tap at full load. <laughs> My god, the amount of bass that come from these bookshelf speakers, which are only four inches, is just impressive. I wish the microphone on this phone didn't auto level, because it rattles things in here. That's getting hot. So I'm going to pull the scope out and place some uh, pink noise. That's what I want. I'm going to turn the knobs and see if we can get a rough idea of what it, the exact frequencies are. I don't know the math to figure out what the slope is for boost and cut. By ear, it sounds like it's just a normal plus minus 8 to 10 dB, just like every generic equalizer ever. Now I know for this I really should be using a spectrum analyzer because a scope is going to be... Actually, I might not be of much use for a pink noise sweep. However, I decided let's play a 1 kilohertz test tone and see how much voltage swing we can get out of this with the the funky supply voltage it's running at. Okay, so we got 1 kilohertz tone. We are running at 0.2 volts per division. We can go ahead and bring up our settings menu. So our RMS right now is um, 0.6. Whoa, that went up a little bit. Let's go to half a volt per division. Okay, let's go to one volt per division. Good lord, man. Two volts per division. Okay, let's make sure, whoops, let's make sure the phone is turned all the way to the max. It is, and we are getting a clean 3.4 volts RMS. 
Of course, our peak to peak is just just starting to bang off 10. No, I'm not. I'm just going to play a video of a sweep. I'm going to set all the controls to flat, and I'm going to max each one and let the sweep play and see where the peak's the highest. That'll tell us where our um, um, turnover points are. That's the technical term, turnover points. Okay, so we got it flat. So we're going to turn our base all the way up. I'll speed this up in video. It's two minutes long. goes from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Oh, now it's clipping. Space all the way up. We hit 100 hertz, and the slope is starting to go down. So the turnover, I think, is somewhere around the 60 to 80 hertz mark. It's going up, going up, going up. Dropping. About 70 to 75 hertz is the turnover for the bass. Now... We're going to do it for our mid-range. 250, and we're still at the same spot. I'm watching our RMS. Okay, uh... So the mid-range point isn't clear. We got to 2.3K, and our RMS was down to like 2.2. So we're going to rewind this back up to about 600 hertz. Oh, we got 3.7... 3.8, 3.6, 3.4. Yeah, so the mid range is around like, what was that about 700 hertz? Let's try that again. Yeah, about 7 to 800 hertz is its peak, and then it starts to drop off. Okay, now we're going to turn our treble to the max. And I already seen it go up a little bit. Is it oscillating? Looks like it's oscillating. Am I scope this? The 138 doesn't have a high enough bandwidth. So around 2.5K, the treble is starting to come in. But I figure it'll probably go all the way up to like 10. 3.3, 3 3.4, 3.7, 3.8, 4. We're at 5.5K. We've went over 4 volts. 4.345. I'm going to watch this. Turn the volume down. Wait till it starts dropping again. To four eight four nine five volts five fifteen five two five three five six five seven five eight now what you just seen right there cut off is actually where YouTube itself has a hard limiter so the RMS is up to six at 15k and then YouTube just poof cuts it I'm gonna say the turnover for that is between um 10 to about 13 and a half thousand somewhere in there the use of imprecise components meaning ceramic capacitors when you should use film for audio crossover circuits like this can lead to points that are not exact or are very broad which is exactly what we've seen there with the high pass or the treble boost <laughs> Well guys, there you have it. This was my very quick video of the simple dual um, NE5532 three-band preamp board for my C-Station. I like the board. These knobs being backwards bugs me, but I can just flip it upside down when I mount it, and that'll take care of that. I'm not sure what's with that uneven voltage. I said in my build, I'm going to end up taking out the regulators and shorting them because I'm going to have a separate power supply for the preamp and the switch. My input switch, so that's not a, not a problem. So you guys enjoyed the video. You can leave a like, comment, subscribe. But I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye for now. Another trick I forgot to mention you can do with many op-amp boards is even after you've killed the power, see the light's not on, it's still plugged in, if you turn the volume all the way up, it will still pass a signal. But I also just realized I shot this entire video and forgot to put on the knobs and nuts and washers that come with it. So it does come with some shiny chrome knobs.